Hello YouTube, this is Gizmo and Bella's Human, and today we're going to be sharing our delicious homemade turkey dinner dog food recipe. Our youngest Boston Terrier, Bella, has had horrible reactions to processed dog food since she was adopted by us. Our trafficker neglected her to the point that she was seriously sick when she entered our home, and her food allergies persisted for four years. She's five years old now, and as you can see, she is healthy and thriving. If you want to know more about her beginnings, I'll leave a link in the description to Annabella's Christmas story. Many people have reached out to us about our recipe and would like to try it with their dogs that also suffer from food allergies. I was at my wit's end when I decided to try human-grade home-made food. If you use this recipe, you do so at your own risk. I assume no liability for results from the reproduction or consumption. I am simply sharing a recipe that works for my best friends. And I welcome any feedback you would like to post in the comments section. Now let's get started. Okay, let's talk about what's in the recipe. Our ingredients are four to five pounds of ground turkey. I buy two three pound patches and get it for about $3 less, and it gives them an extra pound of turkey in the mix. You'll also need a th one third cup of cooked liver, and that equals one of these patties that I found frozen in the frozen section next to the seafood. You'll also need a 15 ounce can of pureed pumpkin, You'll need a cup and a half of either brown rice or white rice. I use brown rice because the white rice contains water and I've noticed that at towards the end of the week the uh, food tends to get a little bit more mushy and soggy because of all the water that's seeping from that white rice. You'll also need two pounds of sweet potatoes, four large carrots, a 12 ounce bag of green beans, a 12 ounce bag of green peas, a 16 ounce bag of blueberries, or you can buy fresh blueberries. My youngest doesn't like the whole blueberry. She likes some mushed up in the food. So I get this type, it's easier to mush up. Um, you'll also need a seven ounces of spinach. So I buy the 12 ounce bag. It's the smallest that you can get in the frozen section. And I just split it and use it between two batches. The seasonings you'll use is black pepper and ground turmeric. There's also calcium for this recipe. I usually cook my eggshells. I'll boil them in water and then I cook them in an oven. And then I put them in a coffee grinder and grind them up to a powder and then I sprinkle that in the mix. Um, I'll give you more instructions on how to create that in a separate video. All right, let's get started. Okay, I've seen several ways for the turkey portion to be cooked. And some people like to brown it. And if you do so, use about two tablespoons of sunflower oil to do that. But I actually like to cook mine in my crock pot and I put it on a uh, poultry or meat settings and um, that's what I'm going to do today. And I usually cook the turkey and the liver together in the first round. All right, I'm all filled up in the pot here. I just placed my meat in there uh, and kind of loosened up the loaf that it comes in. And I put the turkey on the bottom and I lay the liver on the top and I try not to keep it, I try to keep it below the maximum line as everybody should. So um, now I'm going to just add some water. And I basically just, and I basically just want to get the water to cover the top of the, um, meat um, and that should suffice because it will be under pressure when it's cooking so that should keep all the moisture in there and it'll give us an excellent broth to cook our vegetables in when it's time for the vegetables 
Okay, now I'm going to choose my settings. I'm going to choose meat and stew. And I am going to make mine needs to cook for an hour and 15 minutes. And hit start and it'll start preheating. And this is on the pressure portion of my crock pot. Okay, now I've got an hour to prepare the next batch that'll go in the crock pot. That'll consist of my sweet potatoes and my carrots and the rice. Okay, now I've got my cup and a half of rice set aside and my two pounds of sweet potatoes and carrots chopped up. Uh, basically like you would chop for yourself for a stew. Boy, look at them drools. Somebody knows it's vittle making day. It's vittle making day, ain't it? Yeah, get that turkey going, buddy. Got that turkey going. The next thing I do is place the blueberries in a warm bowl of water so that they get soft and I can mash them up later. I don't like cooking them in a steamer uh, because they just get too mushy. Um, and they'll lose some of their nutritional value. So I just let it warm up in a bowl. Next, I turn my attention to the green vegetables. I use a small steamer pot. What I do is place about an inch of water in the bottom of the pot, and then I take the steamer portion, I fill it with the green beans first, layer it with the green peas on top of that, and then I place the spinach, seven ounces, not the full bag, on top of that. Place the lid on it, set it on top of the steaming pot, and I'm ready to go when I'm ready to start cooking it. I'm not going to start it right away. What I like to do is wait till the meat's done. <clears throat> then I come in here and I can turn on the vegetables while I'm getting the meat out of the pot. By the time I'm done with the meat, getting it out of the pot and placing the other vegetables in and starting that timer, these will be ready to take it, be taken out of the steamer and placed into the mixture. Checking back with the crock pot, I see that we haven't reached temperature yet. So I've got at least an hour and 15 minutes that I can go and relax while this does its job. See you in an hour and 15 minutes. Our mixture is ready now. So I'm gonna turn off the crock pot. I'm gonna pull out these blueberries because they are now defrosted and they're very soft. So I'm just gonna squeeze them while I got them in my hands while they're in the bag. You might want to open the bag, take some of the air out if you haven't already done so. That helps smash them up. Okay, that's ready to be added when it's done. And I'm going to take the bowl. And we're going to open this up. Oh yeah. Good. First, I'm going to get this liver out of here because I need to chop it up. So, and it's always so tender that it wants to come to pieces. All right. And to get this out of here, I'm using this type of a strainer. Um, husband uses it for dumplings. And I'm just going to cut down through the wad of turkey meat. And I'm going to hold it here and let it drain real good. Um, if you have a reason for needing your uh, mixture more moist, you can always just move it directly in the bowl, not let it drain so much. But I like to try to get most of it off. So that's one half of it. And then the pretty. Oh yeah, that's pretty. Now we'll get this other half. Let it drain off. Okay. 
Okay, I think we got most of it. And we'll get off the biggest rendering pieces in here. Got all the meat out of there. Now I am going to start putting in the the rice. Cup and a half of brown rice or white rice, if you prefer your mixture to be more soggy, you can use the white rice. Sometimes there are puppies that do like the sogginess. Now I'm going to place all my vegetables on top of the all of my orange vegetables on top of the. Um, rice. I just want to make sure that I'm got the juices up to the top of it. That's good enough because it's going to be boiling in there and it's going to be perfect. All right, we're going to put the lid back on. And I'm going to use the meat and stew again. I'm going to do this for for me it's 17 minutes. Um, some people get by with 15 minutes on a crock pot. Depends on how you like your rice. I like mine a little soft but not so mushy. So um, it makes it easier for them to eat. And I hit start. So it's going to heat up. While it's doing that, I'm going to turn on the steamer vegetables. So I've got the greens going. I just started it. I should have started it before I pulled the meat out of the pot. If I had, it'd be done by now. Now what I'm going to do is cut up my liver. it up pretty good. It's a large recipe and I want to make sure that they get some in every feeding. So I'll match it up real fine. And then I'm just going to mix it right on in there with the turkey. Now I'm going to take a potato masher and I'm just going to break up the big chunks. About like that. Then I'll get a better tool and finish it up with some nice grinding. Mixing this, breaking it up a little bit. And I'm surprised I don't have an audience in here. They're outside. Enjoying the fall weather, playing in the falling leaves. All right, I've broken that up some. Now I'm going to add our seasonings. I like to add it to the meat. For this, you'll need for this you'll need a quarter teaspoon of turmeric. And a quarter teaspoon of pepper. And 
and I keep my eggshells refrigerated once I've made it. And I'll instruct you on how to make the eggshell calcium um, in the next video. I put in five teaspoons of the calcium. You can do four also. But since I have an extra pound of turkey in there, I'm doing five. Now I'm gonna really mix this in. mix it in so that they don't get a mouth full of turmeric or pepper eggshells. Oh wow, now look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Fantastic. So now I'm going to take this and I'm gonna put it over here in this bowl. I can't tell you how much I appreciate having this bucket. If you're gonna be making your own dog food, I strongly invest in one of these buckets. Uh, I got this at a restaurant supply, it cost me around $20. I think I got it on sale, it was normally 30. Uh, but it has lasted me a year. And you need something big like this so you can move all these parts around once you get it all in the bucket before you actually put it in your storage bowls. So um, you might want to look into this. Okay, now I've got my meat in the bucket. As you can see, a nice, nice round. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to add my pumpkin puree. give this a good mixing up because I want to get it nice and even and it'll take on a little orange coloring to the meat I like to hold it on the side and do it this way and then flip it around Make sure, see how that's lighter than the rest of that? You might not be able to tell. But part of this meat's lighter, so I know it's not mixed in real good with it. Mmm, smells good. Human grade dog food. All right, now I'm gonna take my blueberries I've already mashed them with my hand, and I'm just going to pour them in. Ooh, that smells good. Hey, Gizmo. It's getting close to diddle time, Gizmo. All right. And now I'm going to mix this in. And antioxidants in every bite, every serving. All right. Now we're waiting on the sweet potatoes and the carrots and the rice to finish cooking. We're at 16 minutes to go. 
So it's just started counting down after reaching the right temperature. And over on the stove, we've got the greens and they are heating up and looks like it's going to be vittles tonight. We'll be back in a minute. All right, our green vegetables are ready. And I've let them cool off a little bit, but they're still hot. But we're gonna add them in. So that's the spinach, the peas, and the green beans. And I'm mixing it all up in there. Isn't that a pretty color? Lots of color in my belly girl. And that's what we got right now. Nice color to it. Now we're just waiting a couple of more minutes for the sweet potatoes and the carrots and the rice. All right, the carrots and the sweet potatoes and rice are done. I'm gonna use the same tool to scoop out as much of the carrots and sweet potatoes as I can. And I'll let these drain pretty good also. What do you think of that gizmo? Smells pretty good, don't it? Some of the rice rises to the top. Most of it stays to the bottom, allowing you to get the vegetables out because we're going to mash these up and try to use the mixer to break up any large skins on the sweet potatoes. So they don't get clogged and block the air passage of a little puppy. I'm not worried about mashing up the rice because it usually survives any type of manipulation. Like I said, it's those potato skins that I'm mostly concerned with. But they have so much nutrition in it. That's really, I think it's important. So I'll leave it on there. Alrighty. Now I've got these in the bowl here, so I'm just going to mash them up with my potato masher. And I kind of give a twist when I go down over the skin. Here you can see, see that skin? That, if you got a little dog, that could suffocate him if it gets caught in his throat. So be sure and mash those down. Um, one time, I just thought I went too far. I actually cut lines of the skin before I put it in here and then they cooked right off of the potatoes and they were already small so if you got a small dog that's an easy way to do it also but I use the masher to just kind of break up that skin it's soft what a pretty color This does tend to break up the fillings also.
Now I'm going to put this in the pot. Start that mixing process. Boy, it smells like turkey dinner. Thanksgiving morning. The mixture there. Now I'm gonna work on getting the rest of my rice out. I'm just gonna put it directly in the bowl. And when I get most of it out. And truly, the price of this compared to the price of bagged dog food and other dog foods, even the cheap brands, the price is better for this. It's cheaper and way more healthy. Way, way more healthy. Um, and I'll give you some tips on the shop. Towards the end of this video, to help you get the most bang out of the buck. All right, so now I've got it completely mixed. It is completely prepared. And that's what we look like, folks. Fiddles for two Boston Terriers for six days. I give Gizmo a cup in the morning. A cup in the evening. I give Bella three quarters cup in the morning and three quarters cup in the evening. Bella's gotten to where she's skipping her morning breakfast um, and holding out till the evening. So it's very filling and uh, they absolutely love it as you will see. Okay, let's talk about this mess, Gizmo. The messy pots that we gotta get all cleaned up. There's really not that many. You have the mixing bowl, the lid to the crock pot, the pot within the crock pot, the spoon, the bucket, and the pot that we cook the green vegetables in and the chopping block. Utensils I put in the dishwasher, I do these by hand. So it's a very easy way of making your dog's food and it doesn't take a lot of work and cleaning up afterwards, which is the part I hate the most. Okay, now I'm gonna place the food in the storage bowls 
what I like to do is I like to place a wet washcloth on the bottom of my stainless steel sink um, because it's such, this just moves around on that so easily. So I put this on there and it keeps it from moving on its own. And then I take the bucket and turn it on its side. The easiest way I've found to do this. And then I just start bringing it out a little bit at a time. Look at that, isn't that beautiful? Yum, yum, yummy. Gizmo's over here at my feet, just drawing away. My little bubble boy. This recipe renders about 21 cups. I feed Gizmo two cups a day and I give Bella a cup and a half a day. So that equals about 21 cups and I get six days of food out of this recipe. Okay, put just a little bit more in there. I think that's enough for that bowl. And it's still quite warm, so I'm going to have to wait a little bit to give any to the puppies. Which are eagerly waiting, as you can see. <laughs> and you want some of them vittles, huh? Yeah. Alright, that's that. I like to pack it down in there so I don't get any water build up inside of it. I think I might take a scoop out of there. I get two. There we go. Okay. Yeah, I've got another smaller bowl. The rag really does help keep it from sliding everywhere. I tell you, you don't want to know how much I had to flush down the sink on my first batch. I went to hit that bucket at the bottom and it just slid. And food went down the drain. Such a waste. And there you have it. Turkey dinner. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. I'll have to stop taking this to my Thanksgiving family gatherings now. I'm just <laughs> kidding. But it is human compatible. I mean, yeah, it is. I've, I've tasted it. It tastes pretty good. Um, one thing I can say, when you're making it, feel free to lick your fingers. It's not like you're licking dog food off your fingers. But it's been a... Uh, wonderful recipe for them. They're healthy. Their weight is down. Their energy's up. The skin issues have dissolved. Um, just a wonderful recipe for your puppy. And now for the test. Oh, that's a happy sound. Does a pet parent proud? And look at how shiny and her weight, just perfect. Gizmo too. He's really lost the weight since we put him on this diet. And he's solid muscle now. 
I don't think he's got any fat on him. Oh, Bella, was that good? Was that good, baby girl? Oh, yes. Oh, that was so good. Well, that's our little recipe. Before we get to the results of this diet, be sure to like, subscribe, and set your notification to receive more content from Gizmo and Bella's world. Visit the channel and spend a few fun minutes in a wacky life of two Boston Terriers. Now for the cost. Depending on what dog food you purchase, the difference in price is nominal to this homemade diet. Bella was on an expensive Royal Canine Ultimino, so this recipe was much cheaper and easier to purchase than the prescription food. Not to mention all the money we have saved on vet visits and treatments for the hives it cost. Here's a breakdown of the cost at regular prices, but more often than not, we get the ingredients on sale. We also shop at Kroger's and do so on Fridays, when you can collect four times the fuel points on purchases. On average, we usually pay under a dollar per gallon when filling our car and truck. Now the results. Our dogs are as healthy as they've ever been. We have had a full year without any vet visits for illnesses. Their coats are thick and shiny. They have no skin irritations after eating and anyone with a Boston Terrier can appreciate that they seldom pass gas on this new diet. But their poops are firm yet soft enough to easily pass. So we're giving this one four paws and a wet nose. Thanks for watching. Now watch how to make calcium powder from eggshells.